looks like things have slowed down a bit with 26 participants. So if we want to go ahead and start. Okay, I think we can, uh, we have two and a half hours today and uh, we have a second talk uh, the day after tomorrow. And uh, we can, uh, I think we can start now if we, uh, if we are in a hurry. <laughs> How do you how do you like it, uh, Masika? Um, we could probably start now. Okay, I am recording Good. it, so if if anybody else is is joins late, we'll we'll they'll be able to see a recording later. Right. Okay. Um. So good morning here in Wuhan, uh, city of China, and uh, good morning to everybody, and uh. I'm Jianghu again from uh, Junior Science Research Center of Wuhan University. So today I'm very uh, happy to be here to present something about our uh, latest work on the open source software uh, Pride PVP AR. A actually, this is uh, our work during the past 10 years uh, when I began my uh, PhD study in the, in the UK and also have my postdoc in the US and then come back to China to uh, continue to work on the geodesy technique using uh, satellite net, uh, satellite data. Uh, so um, I, I thank I thank the uh, the help from UNESCO uh, to make this possible for us to uh, to, uh, to 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 introduce the software using this uh, forum. Um, I'd like to uh, divide my talk today into two parts. The first part is the fundamental of high precision gene assays just for I know you some of you guys may have very uh, very uh, rich knowledge of gene assays but some of you guys may uh, may, may not have enough uh, background for high precision gene assays data processing you may uh, be involved in gene assays data processing uh, in your work but you may not know uh, what's happening now for the gene assays technique and then the second part would be the basic processing for Genesis data using the, our software. Um, so th that's just some basic operation to study. study it. Uh, I'd like to talk about some advanced topics like uh, how to, how to, uh, to com uh, for the comparison of uh, multi Genesis data and the GPS only processing. And then uh, how to use some, some satellite products from other ACs of IGS, for example, from code uh, from JPL and, uh, and, and, and so on. And also we will talk about the processing of mobile platforms like airplanes and uh, ships in the advanced topics session. So here I would like to uh, make some brief introduction of the hyper-precision genesis here. So we know uh, genesis geodesy is quite popular and this is uh, one of the main topics addressed by UNEFCO. Now it's a collision of UNEFCO and IRIS uh, so, um, we know uh, the uh, gene assays is the most advanced technique to, uh, to uh, observe the changes of uh, the earth uh, deformations and the climate change changes. So here we can see, uh, we see a lot of uh, data activities for earthquakes happening in the past, uh, past month in Alaska and in China, we use the real-time gene assays to record the shaking of the ground and also using Genesis for some long-term mon uh, monitoring of the Earth's uh, plate uh, tectonics and uh, glacier, glacier uh, uh, evolution over the past millions of years. So here, uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, that, on, on this because uh, we are, maybe our main job is to introduce the software. So I'd like to uh, do some uh, brief introduction on the latest development, development of the Genesis constellation. So Genesis uh, is, com uh, is composed of four uh, global constellation, constellations and the two regional constellations. Uh, here, the first one is GPS, which was developed over 40 years ago uh, by the US government. Uh, it's the first Genesis in the world and uh, because of its uh, development and its, uh, its a great impact on the human life. So the, uh, the, uh, the European Union and China and Russia uh, also developed their own uh, genus as a system as, uh, as well. So here, uh, uh, at the moment, the GPS constellation is composed of about 32 satellites in the space. 
and uh, the satellite spacecraft has been uh, uh, evolved for about four or five generations. Now the latest one is the Block 3 spacecraft. Uh, we have about five uh, Block 3 satellites. And uh, the signals emitted by the GPS satellites uh, has uh, becoming more and more affluent. And we see here uh, from the Block 2R satellite constellations, we have the L1CA code. So this code means a sewer range management. And the sewer range management means some, some, some uh, distance measurement, measurement between the satellites and uh, the receivers on the, on the ground. Uh, here we use uh, more and more advanced code like L2C and the L5 code to have some more uh, um, reliable and uh, more precise positioning uh, using, uh, using the GPS measurements. Uh, now we, uh, I'd like to make some, uh, to present some pictures of the latest uh, GPS uh, supplies for uh, GPS-3 and the GPS-3F 3, uh, 3 in the future. Uh, the the GPS-3 supplies uh, will have the measurements three times more precise than uh, the previous measurements emitted by the GPS, uh, GPS space vehicles uh, in the past. Uh, it's designed to life is about 15 years. It's really a long time. And actually most of the satellites can be, uh, can survive for over 20 or even 30 years. Um, it has uh, eight times improved anti-jam capability, although we're not going to deal with, uh, deal with uh, the, the, the anti-jam capability, but this is very important for GPS to, uh, to be used in some kind of very difficult conditions. And uh, GPS 3F satellites uh, hasn't been uh, launched to the space. And uh, there, uh, there will be 22 additional GPS uh, 3F satellites in the space in the future. Uh, it's called a digital navigation payload. So you can change the, uh, uh, I guess it may change the signal frequencies whenever uh, they want. Um, all right, this is the GPS. And then we come to GLONASS. Uh, the GLONASS constellation was developed nearly at the same time as uh, the GPS constellation. Uh, the biggest difference for GLONASS signals uh, from the uh, GPS signals is uh, it has the frequency division multiple access signals, uh, which means uh, the satellites you can see from a station will have different frequencies. So then uh, each satellite will have its own frequency and uh, you have to uh, you have to make decision on what frequency to do, and to do, uh, for example, the ambiguity fixing. I mean, the integer cycle resolution of the ambiguities, and then this uh, poses a big threat to the integer resolution, integer cycle resolution of GLONASS data. Um, now, uh, the GLONASS constellation was restored in the year of 20, uh, 2012 uh, by the Russian government. And now it uh, is in the progress of a global modernization. So we have uh, the L1 and L2 and L3 CDMA signals, which is similar to the GPS signals. So all of the satellites will have uh, the same frequencies and this can facilitate the high precision positioning. Uh, but we, are, we have only a few GLONASS K2 satellites. So it's not, uh, it's not enough to enable a positioning. And now we are still using the FDMA signals from GLONASS satellites. Then we come to Galileo. Uh, Galileo system is one of, uh, it's the first uh, full commercial satellite system uh, based on GNSS. Uh, this is the European systems. Uh, it was started to be developed in the year of 2000, around the year of 2000. Uh, it has open service, a public regulated service, search and rescue service and so on. Uh, it can provide uh, very high precise positioning uh, because of its high quality observations. Uh, you, if you have a receiver to uh, collect some data from Galileo system, you can see its pseudo range have, have, uh, have a very high precision compared to a GPS and the GLONASS and uh, as well as Beidou. So, um, and also it provides some free services like PPP service from its satellites, but this is still, still under, under development. Uh, now it has uh, 22 FOC satellites and four IOV satellites. Uh, it has not been fully operational. Uh, it should have a 30 satellites constellation, but now it's still uh, short about four satellites in the, in the space. Uh, so we will see in the next year whether the European Union will, uh, will make the constellation full uh, for the uh, operational uh, positioning 
uh, service to be started by the common users. Uh, one, uh, one interesting thing to note is the Galileo satellites have uh, six uh, frequency, uh, frequency bands, like the E1, E5A, E5B, and E5AB, and E6. And GPS has only three, and GLONASS has only two. So uh, uh, two, two major frequency bands for GLONASS. Uh, so you see, uh, we do we we did a lot of uh, some uh, we we can we could see a lot of papers on the multi frequency uh, positioning for the rapid initialization of your uh, PPP services. So this is uh, the um, the direct impacts of multi frequency signals. Then we come to uh, uh, the, the 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 typical sub uh, the uh, typical service provided by uh, that Galileo. Uh, which is called the free PPP service. Uh, this service will be divided into two parts. The first part is a global uh, service, which can uh, which provides uh, Warbit satellite clock and buys its products. So you see uh, the precision of this product can help you to achieve uh, a positioning precision of 20 centimeters in the horizontal plane and uh, 40 centimeters in the vertical. It has a convergence time uh, the convergence time is the initialization time that you need to wait before you can achieve a centimeter level positioning. So this is some kind, some kind of um, uh, some kind of obstacle to prevent PVP from uh, being applied in some commercial applications. You have to wait for a long time, 300 seconds, or even in the regional uh, uh, service like uh, within the European areas, uh, they provide also the atmospheric, atmospheric corrections like troposphere and ionosphere corrections. Uh, they can speed up this convergence time to be uh, less than 100 seconds. Uh, this is still too long for some, uh, for some, surf, for some emergency service like, uh, like the earthquake early warning and, uh, and some, some uh, uh, the intelligent transportation. So you need very fast convergence time. But this is not the topic of today. Uh, we're not going to talk anything about uh, convergence time here. All right, then we come to finally the BDS, the Beidou Navigation Satellite System. This is developed by, developed by the Chinese government. Uh, it was divided into three phases. The first phase is the year, from the year of 2000 until, uh, until the year of 2003 uh, for Beidou 1 satellite constellation. It has three geo satellites to provide horizontal positioning, and uh, the vertical positions was provided by by the DEM uh, over China. Uh, it is an active uh, measuring uh, measurement system, uh, which means you have to send a signal to the satellite before you can nail your position. And in the year uh, from the year of 20, uh, 2007, we had uh, the Chinese government began to develop the Beidou two uh, satellite constellation, which is similar to GPS. Uh, they, the users uh, will, not, uh, will not send any signals to the satellites, but receive only the satellite signals from BDS uh, constellation. Uh, but this constellation is only regional. Uh, it consists of about 14 satellites, including five geo satellites, geosynchronous orbit satellites, and five IGSL inclined uh, orbit satellites, and then four uh, MEO satellites, similar to GPS satellites. Uh, it, uh, it provides a complete service for, uh, for China region and, uh, and neighboring, neighboring regions. Now we are still using BDS2 uh, observations in, uh, in our, in our uh, normal uh, positioning uh, calculations. And then uh, from, the year, uh, from the year of 2020, uh, the BDS3 uh, began to provide uh, the global navigation service, which is similar to GPS, global services. Uh, it has 30 satellites in the constellation to provide global coverage. Uh, most of them are, uh, are MEO satellites, so the middle orbit orbiters. Uh, the Beidou 2 and the Beidou 3 satellites uh, both uh, emit multiple frequency signals like B1I and B2I and B3I signals for the Beidou 2. And Beidou 3, uh, we have 29 satellites to emit B1C uh, signals to be compatible with the GPS uh, L1 and uh, Galileo E1 signals. This is for the global interoperation between the GNSS constellations. We have also B2A to cover the, to overlap the frequency of L, GPS L5 and the Galileo E5 
So then the users can use uh, the frequencies, to, the dual frequency signal to, uh, to provide uh, interoperability between GPS, Galileo, and the Beidou 3 uh, constellation to improve their positioning with reliability. Uh, the Beidou, uh, Beidou system also have uh, BDS, B2B, PPP service, free service. Uh, now it's on and uh, you can receive the correction signal from within China uh, to have, uh, have, a, have a decimeter level positioning service. Uh, so, um, and, uh, and the BDS2, BDS3 also have short message communication. It's like to send the messages to using your phone, but you have to, uh, you have to buy a very special equipment to enable this service. All right, okay. So we spend a lot of time on the introduction of this. And then we come to uh, some basic ideas of Genesis positioning. Uh, so in Genesis data observations, we have uh, two kinds of data. The first one is the pseudo range, uh, which, is, which, which is very noisy, but, uh, but unambiguous. I mean, it's, it's, it's direct distance measurement between satellites and receivers. The carrier phase measurements are very precise and to the millimeter level, but ambiguous. You have an ambiguity, which is the integer cycle uh, not measured by the receiver between the satellites and the receiver. So you, all, you can only measure the fractional cycle of the carrier waves uh, of, the, of the cyclonal signals, but the integer cycle, how many integer cycles are there? You don't know that. So you have to estimate them along with other parameters of interest like coordinates and the clock offsets and the troposphere. So this is uh, the major problem that needed to be addressed by high precision genus of software. Uh, this is why our software, software is called the PVP AR. AR means ambiguity resolution, uh, which shows how we can resolve or we can fix the ambiguity parameters to integers after, after high precision data processing. Um, based on the carrier phase measurements, we have the first the traditional one, uh, traditional technique for positioning is RTK, which is very common over the past decades uh, in since the year of 1990s. Um, uh, RTK means that you have, uh, you needed to, you need to have uh, established a nearby station to provide the correction data for you. For example, you can see here, uh, you have a tractor to receive correction from nearby base stations. Uh, including the majorly the troposphere corrections, and then you can you can uh, make uh, you can uh, clean your uh, your observations to prevent any errors from contaminating your your observations, and then you can fix the ambiguities and uh, to achieve the millimeter level and the centimeter level positioning uh, in real time or post processing because of the error mitigation uh, efficiency of the RTK technique. So the, the initialization time normally within several seconds, if you have uh, nearby stations, which, which are not distant, distanced by uh, over 10 or 30 kilometers. Um, this, is the, this map shows the cost of station. I mean, the, uh, the reference stations are uh, developed, established across America. So you see a lot of stations in the, in the Eastern part of, of America. Uh, because why do we need to establish so many stations around America? Because you have to, you have to uh, make sure that all reference stations can cover the area with a lot of people. And then uh, the stations needed to be very close to your rover station, I mean the user station, before the RTK uh, positioning effic efficiency can be achieved. For example, within a few seconds to achieve centimeter level positioning real time, and then you need to have a nearby station within 30 kilometers to enable that. So the, the outcome is you, have, you, you will have heavy station maintenance and frequent communication between your, uh, your user stations and uh, the uh, service providers. And then that will increase the cost for logistic uh, uh, infrastructure. So this is not so welcome in some remote areas like oceans and deserts and some areas without any so much finance to support so large a network of reference stations. So we come to uh, the precise point positioning, which is uh, the major topic of the day. So we, were, we will use the software to process data from a single station rather than two stations. In RTK, you have to use two stations to form baselines before you can do precise positioning, but here, 
Uh, PIMFI technique was first developed in 1997 by a JPL scientist. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it, but originally it was developed for massive network processing. Here we know uh, single, station, sing, single station processing is very natural in ideas because we don't need to know any other stations existing around us, right? So we, uh, we use, uh, we collect the data and we process the data and uh, the position results will not be affected by your nearby station, by your reference stations. Uh, the precise point of positioning uh, is uh, developed within a global reference frame. So you can do it anywhere on the globe even in the oceans or in the desert, some, air, some remote areas like this. And it offers great operational flexibility because you don't need to establish any uh, pre-existing um, reference stations and uh, you just receive the correction data from satellites or from your 4G network to enable uh, centimeter level positioning using a single station. Right, this is a comparison of, uh, among the, uh, the different techniques. You can see RTK is on the left corner of here. So you see RTK positioning can, uh, can be very efficient within, uh, in terms of its convergence time and it's a very high precise, uh, highly precise positions achievement uh, compared to PVP. Uh, if you have a nearby stations about within about 50 uh, kilometers, for RTK, then the RTK can achieve about the millimeter level positioning for you. But for PVP, uh, the, major, uh, the major advantage of PVP compared to uh, RTK is it's a global technique. It does, it's not uh, limited by any nearby station, so it can have a very ubiquitous uh, positioning performance across the world. You see, uh, even, if you're, uh, the, even if you are in the oceans, uh, uh, where there are no nearby stations for you to provide act, uh, correction data, you can still achieve about 10 centimeter level precision uh, there. So this is very uh, useful. Why the PVP technique has been used by many scientists to provide uh, to um, do global network analysis. All right, this is the basics for undifferenced data processing. For undif uh, undifferenced means, uh, actually means a, means a single station. You don't need to many, make any uh, different observations uh, as is the case in RTK. Um, uh, the prerequisite to enable PPP is to uh, have the precise Warbase and Clark product from some third parties. So uh, for example, IGS, the International Genus Service, and here from the, from the graph on the right of this uh, slide, you can see uh, the precise warbin clock uh, provide the navigation or positioning datum for a single user. Uh, in, in, in RTK, you can have this uh, positioning datum uh, established by the, by the reference station. So you just position yourself uh, against the reference station. You don't need to know the precise warbins or clocks of the satellite. You just need to use uh, the broadcast ephemeris from the satellites, and that will be enough for RTK. But in PVP, you have to get uh, the post-processed real-time products, satellite orbit and the clock product from, from, for example, the IGS. And uh, you need to do observation modeling uh, more precisely than the RTK does. For example, you need to uh, eliminate the atmosphere using some, uh, some special linear combination of signals like atmosphere free. And you do the troposphere modeling using systemolean and some very sophisticated mapping function like the VMF1 or some other functions uh, you developed. And uh, you needed to think about the antenna model, uh, like what, what kind of uh, phase center offset and phase center variations uh, that antenna produced from both ends, the satellite end and the receiver end and you need to think about earth, solid earth tides and ocean loading, uh, tidal, uh, tidal, tidal, ocean tidal loading and phase wind up. Uh, phase wind up means something, um, the, the, the relative motion of the satellites and the station can produce some additional corrections for errors for your measurement, for your carry phase measurements. And uh, you don't, you, 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 uh, because of the, of the biases existing in your measurements uh, that cannot be canceled using uh, in the RTK using the difference technique. So your, your ambiguities will not be common, become an integer. It is, they are contaminated by some biases that cannot be calibrated 
calibrated in advance. So you cannot fix them at all. Uh, now we come to uh, the International Genetic Service. So this is a very uh, famous one and it has great impact in high precision positioning. Uh, it's a voluntary, a voluntary federation of over hundreds of worldwide agencies. They aim at provide, providing high, highest quality genetic data and products to support the earth science research and education and uh, any other high precision applications like uh, the earthquake early warning and um, some volcano eruption uh, monitoring and something like that. Uh, the products include, uh, their products include the precise warp in the clock and code and phase biases, which cannot be uh, removed automatically in the PPP. Uh, so we have to make corrections on, on them to recover the integer property of undifferenced ambiguities. And then the antenna PCOs means phase center offset and phase center variations and uh, some terrestrial reference frame product like the ITRF, uh, IGB, IGB20, or something to be contributed to the international reference frame. All right, um, this is a list of the, uh, the, the Warbit, uh, the Warbit and the Clark products released by the IGS. Uh, so they are divided into four parts. The first one is ultra rapid, which means uh, you can use uh, the predicted part of the Warbit to do some real-time applications. Uh, it has a latency, latency of about uh, three hours, but it has a very high accuracy, about five centimeters for GPS warbits and 10 centimeters for uh, the GLONASS warbits. And then we have the rapid and final products. The rapid products have a latency about 16 hours. So you can have the warbits as precise as 2.5 centimeters within a day and find the warbits will make you wait for about 16 days before they can be used for PVP service. Uh, so, but for high precision positioning, like in the post-processing mode, for, for example, for the, uh, for the tectonics, you can use the final products to achieve the highest precision. Uh, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, unknown, uh, this is the errors uh, that, uh, that uh, are contaminating the precise um, the, the, the PVP processing. So we need to show the here, show them here to uh, to facilitate the, the training of the software because some of the products, uh, some of the output files are related to uh, these, um, these errors. The first one is a satellite and a receiver clock errors. The satellite clock errors can be calibrated using IGS products. But the receiver clock errors have to be estimated along with your coordinates and the uh, troposphere estimates and uh, as well as ambiguities. Uh, this is the largest part of the errors within, uh, within uh, GNSS management, but they can be easily addressed. Uh, you can use uh, multiple satellites to estimate the receiver clock very precisely. Uh, so uh, normally it's not a problem. The only issue is different GNSS will have different receiver clock uh, errors uh, apparently. For example, the GPS has its own clock error and, uh, and the Galileo system has its own clock error as well. Uh, the two share a, uh, the same clock within the receiver, but, but they have different uh, pseudo range bias. So that will cause them, them to have different receiver clock biases that need to be addressed in precisely in your, in your software. And then we come to the atmosphere delay. This can be easily addressed using the atmosphere free uh, combination to remove the first order uh, delay of uh, the ionosphere. Uh, so, uh, but sometimes we have to consider about the higher, higher order delay. Uh, for example, the second order and the third order. Uh, for some really high pre highly precise positioning uh, on a global reference frame or glacier rebound analysis, you have to think about the ionosphere delay. Uh, this function is also embedded in our uh, software for uh, of prior the PVAR, but we are not going to talk about talk about this today. You can try that uh, at the hand after this class. And then we come to uh, the troposphere delay. Uh, this is very uh, uh, the most uh, important or most difficult part of the precise point positioning. You can have some very easy model to correct for them, but the problem is there are residual errors that cannot be addressed using the existing model. So a lot of studies have been devoted into this uh, error corrections. 
uh, they are developing some advanced mapping functions like, like GMF and like VMF1, VMF3. They are all included in our software and, but still uh, they, uh, they're not so precise enough to, um, to have, uh, to drive the GNSS positioning to the millimeter level. Uh, you have to wait a long time before the errors can be averaged out before you can, uh, so, uh, so uh, the, uh, the top of sale model is very critical to PVP uh, positioning. Um, uh, for all, all of the ground stations, you have to estimate uh, troposphere delay, but for little satellites um, orbiting around the earth over an altitude of about 40, uh, 400 kilometers, uh, you don't need to think about the, drop, uh, the troposphere delay. In this case, you need to shut them, shut, shut them down um, before you, you do the PVP uh, positioning. All right, this is uh, the impact of not estimated zenith troposphere. So you can see from the left figure, you see um, the troposphere affect a lot uh, the vertical component, the red one. Uh, they have a high correlation with uh, the vertical coordinates. So when, whenever you wanted to estimate the troposphere yourself, you needed to make a troposphere products for weather forecasting or any, anything like uh, related to climate. Uh, you the better fix of your coordinates to the ITRF position before you estimate the zenith delay, because if you don't, your vertical coordinates maybe will be correlated with your troposphere, and your troposphere estimates will not be so precise compared to those um, provided by fixing your coordinates. So this uh, we will talk about this in our uh, second class. Um, and this is a solid earth ties. So you see uh, the solid earth ties is, uh, uh, is caused by the attraction of third bodies like sun and uh, the moon. Uh, this is um, a very a great impact from the sun and the moon on the ground stations. You have to correct for them. Uh, the, pr uh, the problem is if you are doing some processing for airborne data or shipborne data, um, you, you actually, uh, for example, the airborne data on the airplane, you actually don't need to think about the uh, solid earth ties. You can, you can uh, make it off in the processing because uh, the airplane will not be, um, we think it, can, it will not be affected by the solid earth ties. This kind of uh, errors will not affect the GNSS measurements, but it will, uh, it will affect the, the main positions of your stations if you are doing 24 hours positioning. This is similar to the ocean tidal loading, which are very prominent in, uh, in the coastal stations. So if your station is very close to sea, uh, you have to think about ocean tidal loading and uh, uh, you can log in some websites to have the correction coefficients and then our software can read uh, this coefficients to correct for the ocean tidal loading. Uh, uh, this is similar to solid, solid earth ties. It will not affect the genus of measurements directly, but only affect the, uh, the, the, the positions of your station. If you wanted to uh, provide a 24 hour static stations, then you have to think about it. Uh, if you are doing climatic positioning like a shipborne or airborne uh, genus of data, uh, then you don't need to think about ocean tidal loading and you have to uh, turn it off in the software configuration. So we will talk about this later on. And uh, this is a, relative, a receive antenna fit center. So uh, some of you guys may, uh, may know that uh, we have, um, the fit center variations, which depends on the signal frequencies. So different signal frequencies will, ha will have different satellite uh, and the receive antenna fit centers. Uh, they are, they are, they're very small compared to some other areas. Uh, normally the PCV uh, phase center variations is within a few, few millimeters, but the PCO, the phase center offsets are within uh, a few tens of centimeters sometimes. Uh, depending on what kind of antennas you are using. So these areas, they, they will not affect the genesis measurements, measurements directly either, uh, but you have to correct for them before you can use a dual frequency signals to, uh, to do a positioning because you needed to have a reference point on the antenna, which is the ARP. Uh, it's short for the antenna reference point. 
So if you don't correct for them, you will have some kind of um, some kind of uh, uh, variational uh, signals in your in your residuals. So this kind of things will happen. And then this is the satellite antenna phase center. This is similar to the receiver antenna, but uh, uh, they are they are provided by the satellite satellite manufacturers. The GPS satellites uh, don't have uh, manufacturers. Uh, P, uh, antenna an, antenna phase center corrections is partially for previous generation of satellites. The GPS three have the manufacturer's values for antenna center for, uh, antenna phase center for corrections. Uh, the Galileo satellites have all of them ready uh, in the antenna correction data released by the IGS. So different frequencies will have different antenna uh, antenna corrections. This is quite different from the GPS. Uh, previous generations of satellites, which are estimated by the IGS. So for the L1 and L2 frequencies, both have the same uh, antenna corrections. Um, all right, so we are going to finish with this part. So this is one is uh, we provide um, the PVP precise point position and can provide uh, absolute positions of a single station, uh, while RTK provides relative positions only. Uh, so that means uh, we can use PVP very conveniently uh, to do a global positioning uh, at the centimeter level precision. And the most error sources are precisely, uh, should be precisely modeled in PVP, including the satellite wall base and clock products. Uh, you need to correct for them using some third party products. And the station receiver clock, atmosphere delay, which is majorly the, uh, the top sphere. The higher order atmosphere can be considered as well if you want to improve your long-term positioning uh, uh, precisions and the tidal loading and the solid earth ties and the relativity and phase minaps effects. Um, the IGS can provide the most, uh, most uh, products uh, like the satellite warbies and clocks uh, and, uh, and the phase biases. And some other products like the satellite attitudes can also uh, is on the way uh, to be provided by the IGS as well. So uh, we can, so we are, we are, we are going to mention, mention a lot of IGS stuff in our talk. All right, so this is the first part to, uh, to let you know what's happening in the, in the precise, be behind the precise point of positioning. So it's uh, some basic knowledge that you, you need to know before we can understand what kind of files are, produ are produced by the software and what kind of products we are, we are going to use in uh, the precise point positioning. Uh, all right, okay, do you have any, any questions about this part? Uh, if you don't have any background of high precision uh, GNSS? It's just some I'd basic like ideas. So, um... Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, please. Uh, I I'm familiar with phase ambiguities. Is that what you mean by phase windup effects? I haven't heard it in that term, phase windup effect. Uh, the phase went up. Uh, okay, I don't have any slide to show that. Okay, here, I have a backup slides here. The phase went up means um, because of the rel relative motion between the satellite and the receivers, because you the, the earth is rotating, right? And the satellite is moving in the space. So the relative position of the satellite and the receiver uh, are changing. And during this uh, process, uh, during this procedure of uh, the observation process, you will see the, some, some additional errors will be accumulated in your carrier phase measurements, just because, just, uh, just because of the relative motion of the satellite between the satellite and the receivers. Uh, this is very severe, uh, very serious for precise point positioning, and uh, they can they can be mostly cancelled by in the case of RTK, because the two nearby stations uh, forming the baselines can have very similar faint wind up effects, so they can be cancelled in the double difference data processing. But in undifference data processing, this kind of accumulation of phase wind up effects cannot be cancelled. You have to uh, make relevant corrections before you can go into the care phase and the beauty resolution uh, procedure. Uh, uh, the physical uh, the physical background of phase wind up can be uh, referred to a paper 
uh, written in 1994 by a scientist. Um, I can show you the paper later on, but this is kind of very, I'm not a scientist on the, on the physics of the antennas, but this is a general knowledge of the phase van up effects. So it's caused by the relative motion of the antennas and the, between the two antennas, between the soft antenna and the receiver antenna, because their relative, relative position are not fixed in, in the space. So that kind of, uh, kind of, kind of uh, impact will cause the accumulation of the, uh, of the care phase errors, care phase errors. Thank you. Welcome. There's also a couple of questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. One from Kang Wang, uh, does RTK or other different space methods solve for the ambiguity? Yes, uh, the RTK is able to resolve the, uh, the ambiguity because of, it's very easy to resolve an ambiguity in RTK because uh, in uh, the double difference data processing, you can remove all of the errors very efficiently. Uh, you don't need to make any precise models generally uh, before you do ambiguity resolution and uh, the atmosphere errors, the clock errors, all and orbit errors all cancel in the double difference uh, data processing. Uh, and uh, the most important part is the pseudo range and the care phase biases. I mean, the hardware biases uh, also cancel in the process of double difference. But uh, these biases have to be considered in the precise point positioning because you don't have any differencing operations to be carried out in the undifferenced data processing, right? So uh, for RTK, uh, in, in theory, ambiguity resolution is not a problem. It has to be done in RTK, but in PVP, uh, 10 years ago, uh, the PVP, ambig undifferenced ambiguities in PVP cannot be resolved or cannot be fixed to integers. But since only 10 years ago, we have uh, had the opportunity to uh, fix the undifferenced ambiguities into integers because of the provision of uh, phase bias and the syringe bias products. Thanks, Jianghui. Okay, you're welcome. There's another question from Susillo. How to mitigate the multipath in the, in the PPP? All right, this is a good question. We, uh, we don't have any slides to cover this topic here, uh, and we're not going to talk about this in the software. Uh, the multipath effects is very, uh, sometimes it's very simple, but it's, uh, there, is, there is no mature, uh, there's no physical model to correct for this kind of effect um, in a general way, because the multipath effects depend on the environment your station is located in. So if you change your station, if you, uh, if uh, even uh, there are some grass, uh, some, some, some grass around the station, sometimes in the winter, in the summer, and then the multipath effect will be different. So you don't have any physical models like testimonium or atmosphere free, atmosphere free combination to remove it. Then in this case, you can, uh, you, you, you can only rely on the, the concept of side rail filtering for GPS. Uh, because of the constellation, the GPS constellation repeat from day to day, approximately. Uh, so then in, the, in this case, because of the re repetition of the rel relative, relative position between the GPS satellites and uh, the GPS constellation and uh, the receiver, you can see the multipath effects just repeat from day to day as well. And uh, you can use the multipath effects extracted from previous data from previous day to correct for them uh, of today's data. Okay, so this is the only way that we can do. And some other models for multipath corrections are also based on this concept. So the side rail filtering. Uh, the problem for Galileo and the Beta's beta constellation is they can also have the similar concept to side rail filtering, but the orbit or the constellation repetition period is about 10 days for Galileo and uh, eight days for Beidou three constellation. So then you have to wait for about eight days or 10 days before you can do any uh, side wheel filtering to do uh, multipath mitigation. So this is not pragmatic and, uh, uh, and you have to think about modeling uh, the multipath using some hemisphere 
a semi hemisphere model to have uh, it's just like some kind of you can uh, you, 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 you can compute the multipath corrections uh, with respect to a semi sphere um, sem, uh, with a semi a hemisphere hemispherical map in the in the sky it's just like the p uh, like the face center variation corrections um, yeah I'm not going to <laughs> I, I didn't make this clearer but uh, it's, uh, it, uh, it's, it's doable. You can do the salary filtering to, uh, to mitigate the, the multipath effect. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so, a relativistic, uh, some question about the relativistic, uh, the effect different from phase windup effect. They are totally different. The relativistic effect is uh, caused by the relativity uh, theory of Einstein. Uh, so I, I don't I don't cover it here in my slides. I just uh, listed it, but it's very uh, mature corrections for genetic data. So you don't need to worry about it. Uh, we're not going to talk about uh, talk about it in our data processing. It has been corrected for GPS and all of the other constellations. Uh, before they launch the satellites. And also in the high precision genetic data modeling, we need also to think about uh, some other general relativistic effect as well. Uh, this is totally different from the phase wind up effect. They are different, different things. Any, any more questions on, on this uh, basic part? If you have a... Uh, um, yeah, we're not going. We're not going to come back to uh, this slides anymore. Um, if you don't uh, have any uh, basic ideas, yes. Uh, sir, I want to know what uh, what does it like uh, phase wind up basically depends on. The basically it depends on here depends on the relative motion of the satellites and the and the receivers. You can just imagine in the inertial reference system, you can see the receivers are moving as well, along with uh, the Earth, right? And the satellites are constantly mm -hmm. moving. <clears throat> so their antenna direction, I mean, the ball side of your antenna uh, towards the earth from the satellites are different, right? You see their motion is, uh, the, satellites are not, the satellites are not fixed in the space. They're moving. So that, that changing of the, uh, of the uh, relative position, a uh, relative position between the satellite antenna and the receive antenna can cause, because you, you know, um, you know, your, your receiver antenna is based on a right hand polarized, polarization of the, uh, of the of, uh, 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 theory to receive the satellite, the carrier, uh, carrier waves. So, in, okay. so uh, the right hand, uh, the red hand polarization uh, means that if, you, if your satellite is moving around you and this kind of mm -hmm. polarization can, uh, can cause some kind of accumulation of errors. Uh, I don't know how to exactly explain this, uh, this is this, but actually, this is all I can read from some materials. I can understand. So this is just caused by the rel relative relative motion of between the satellites and the receivers. So if you if your satellite is fixed in the space and your receiver is fixed in the space as well, they have don't, they have no uh, no relative motions. Then there is no phase wind up effect. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, if you don't have any questions, so I can, I want to, uh, uh, to close this uh, part. So we can have a break in about, we have to, uh, we can have a break in about half an hour. Um, so let's, let's continue to talk about the second part of the uh, software. So we are going to talk about some basic, uh, basics of the provide PPAR, which is based on uh, precise point of positioning using multiple constellation observations. So here we, uh, I guess you have all installed the software uh, successfully. I can go into, um, let me show you uh, how can get into the software. So I have a lot of things on my home directory, but you can go to private PVR 2.1 here. So this is the install um, script. You can just use the bash, uh, bash install uh, to, to, um, to have the software to be placed in your in your computer like this, so you see here. 
uh, you can just reinstall it and anytime you want. Uh, if you change the source code, you have to reinstall it. So it's very simple. You don't need to, you don't need to install any dependencies. Uh, the only G Fortran is needed here. So finally, if you see this logo, you, you will see the software. software has been successfully installed. And here, if you, uh, you, if you have the first installation, uh, you'd better run the test because your configuration template needed to be uh, adjusted uh, before you can use it, be before you can use them in your computer. So here, I have run the test before, so I don't need to run them anymore. Uh, this is the installation of the software. Uh, I see some people have the problem for WGET. I, I will check that because uh, maybe we are we were using some kind of advanced advanced version of uh, of WGET. All right, this is the structure of the software. So you see here. Um, let me make it make it larger here, and uh, right. So it has multiple directories in the software. It has bin directory containing the executables and the doc containing the manuals and tutorials for version two and the examples. Uh, this example is mainly for our data processing. So we are going to do our processing here and the scripts containing the plotting, facili plotting facilities and all other batch processing scripts. SRC contains the source code and the table contains uh, some, uh, some files for uh, for, for example, for the global grids, uh, for the modeling of troposphere, and the Win uh, contains a Windows Lite version. But this is uh, this now is empty because we are we haven't updated the latest version to 2.1, and this is for some users uh, who are more familiar with Windows. And they install install uh, means the install script, and then we have the change log here. All right, so. Here is uh, the programs we provide for, uh, for PPPAR, uh, which is contained in, in the bin directory. We have the RC, uh, which is do undifferenced ambiguity resolution at a single station. And then the most important one, I will show them here, and the LSQ means the least squares adjustment. Uh, this is the main pro uh, estimator engine we used for PPPAR. And the RABIC, a RABIC means the residual editing, uh, it means some uh, some iteration for for the cycle sleep and outlier detection. So here, this is radic for uh, data uh, for data editing, and then we have the SPP, uh, which is a standard single point positioning using the pseudo range. Um, this function is only used for uh, providing some uh, initial or a priori positions to be used by the PPP so PPP functions. And the TABIT, TABIT means some pre-processing. Uh, capability of the software. So we will use uh, some uh, algorithms to detect uh, the cycle slips and other liars uh, before we start the precise point positioning. All right, so let's come to the structure here. Uh, the example the example, con uh, example directory contains uh, the major work areas we are going to do. We are going to start the PPP uh, testing today. But actually, you can run the software anywhere if you want. But in the example directory, we contain the example data uh, here and product. All of the precise products from the IGS will be stored here. And the software will refer to this directory to find, to locate the precise products. And then the test mag and test date. Test, uh, this test means the, uh, the, uh, the, to, to validate your installation uh, in Linux and test Mac to validate your, inst your installation in, in Mac system. And we have four configuration template files here for mobile positioning uh, and hourly and short period positioning and the daily positioning and for hybrid as well. Uh, they can generally use for other processing as well, not only for mobile or hourly positioning, uh, but uh, I just put them, put them here for your convenience because some, some guys may not be familiar with the editing of the control file, we have a lot of options in the control file. So if you want a very one-step positioning, one-step processing, you'd better use this configuration template file. But you, if you wanted to have the most um, sophisticated positioning, you have to know how to change, how to make, uh, make changes on the options in the control file. I mean, the configuration file template, All right? 
Uh, then we come to uh, the structure of the scripts. So in the scripts, we majorly have the PDP3. This is the only command that we needed to use today to process data. So all of the data processing or any other kind of uh, processing strategies for mobile positioning, for static positioning or any, anything like this, we use only PDP3. It's like the G2P of, of Gypsy. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a batch processing script. And then we have the four, uh, a few plotting facilities to, uh, to visualize the results from PVP AR. We, have, we can plot the climatic tra trajectories and we can plot the troposphere. We can plot the residuals, the care phase and the sewer range residuals for, uh, for debugging. And uh, we can plot the ground track of mobile platforms as well. All right, uh, then we come to a uh, table. Uh, a table contains a few uh, files. For example, the naming convention of the file and uh, some, grid, uh, some grid files for, uh, for global temperature and pressure model and ocean loading and, uh, and some other files used by VMF1 and the VMF3. And also, and also the NTEX file. Uh, also, sorry, the NTEX file. The NTEX file means the phase center offset and the phase center variation corrections provided by IGS. So it's, it must be used by the high precision data processing. And uh, these files are updated frequently. So you have to, uh, the, 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 uh, our software, uh, the script will, uh, will deal with it automatically. It will uh, download the most appropriate uh, NTEX file according to your set at Warbits and clocks. So they are corresponding to each other. You can see here the IGS 14, we have a GPS week here, 2082, and we have 20, 2063 as well. So it depends on the week. And here, this is the source code. Uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about the source code, but you can look at it if you are, uh, if you wanted to know the algorithm, uh, algorithm uh, returns, right? And this is the structure of the software. So here, um, the, the processing architecture of software, you can see here we have the data cleaning and the parameter estimation and the ambiguity resolution, the three parts. Uh, the software is very simple in, in terms of algorithms. Uh, you need to only need to use TADID to, uh, this is a function called, called TADID to pre-process the data using uh, some uh, various kind of uh, various uh, combination observables and uh, to detect some large uh, cycle slips and uh, outliers. And then we have the estimator LSQ and uh, we have Radic to do iteration of the residual of the cycle slip and uh, outlier detection. So this iterate after, after we finish this iteration, we can go to RSIG to fix the ambiguities. After RSIG to fix the ambiguities to form a constraint file, and then we can re-carry out the LSQ to have the ambiguity fix the solution. So this is the whole processing procedure for, uh, the, uh, for the software. Right, to install it. Uh, so I just show you how to install it. So I'm not going to repeat this anymore, uh, but you need to run the test as well, validation uh, to run the test Mac in the Mac, software, uh, Mac system and the test age for Linux. This is automatic, automatically chosen by the script. Uh, but if you, if you wanted to run, uh, run, run the test later, so you have to choose, choose them correctly in the example directory. All right, we have, the, we have uh, five kinds of test results. For the first one is a static 24 hour fixed. Uh, so we do uh, one position uh, using 24 hours of data. And then we have kilomatic 24, we use one, 24 hours of data for epic-wise positioning. And troposphere, so we do troposphere estimation uh, by fixing the coordinates or tightly constraining the coordinates. And then we have climatic, uh, climatic positioning using one hour data uh, to use the number method to fix the ambiguities. We have hybrid data processing uh, for seismic stations. So I will show you some time uh, later, uh, some time later for the examples uh, for the examples. All right, these are the uh, satellite products. So where you can download the satellite products. Uh, for each processing, we needed to use five products. So the SP3 file, uh, which contains the orbit, the ERP contains the earth rotation parameters, and the clock contains the satellite clock, phase clock uh, corrections. 
and the BIA files containing the FaceBuy's products. And the ATT files contains the satellite attitude, that means the Quetelian's, Quetelian's files. Uh, this is uh, one of the latest products provided by IGS. So it was just released a few months ago. Uh, we usually don't have uh, this product uh, before because uh, the software, each kind of software will have their own uh, algorithm to model the satellite attitudes. But now the IGS requires each AC to provide this file to product to facilitate the users to do high precision positioning. Uh, we can also use some other products like Alnosphere Grid from, from IGS and the Troposphere Grid file. Uh, you know, they can help you to improve your higher order atmosphere modeling, but we are not going to cover it today. Um, all of the products will be downloaded to this uh, directory. Uh, that's the, let me see. So we see here we can, uh, so we see this is, the, this is the first directory after the uh, precise, uh, prior PVAR. So we have the example here. Uh, we go to example. Um, so we have a list of files here. We have the products here. So let's go to products. And we can see these are the products we are going to use today. I have put all of them here. So if you don't have any internet access on your computer, you need to copy the products I uploaded yesterday to this directory. So you put all of them here. And this clock means the cellular clock errors corrections. ADT means attitude corrections, quotillions. And warp means uh, the, the, the satellite warp is ERP. And the BIA means uh, the, the bias products. So for each day, so we have the products here. Um, so let's come back to the, the results. So we have the results here. Uh, so this are the, so after you uh, test, you validate your software using the test, uh, you, uh, after running the test here, test the Mac and test, test SH here, uh, you, will you will have four, uh, five kinds of results. So each kind, for each kind of results you have, for example, here for the static, uh, you have the results file like this, the STT, uh, log file, com file, race file for the residuals and the RCK file for the receiver class. And the Zenith delay, I will show this data on for all kinds of results you can see here. They are divided into different parts. Okay. Um, so here, this is a configuration files. So we have four configuration files. Let me, let's come back to the example directory. Here, we come back here. So you see, start from this files, start with uh, config. They are the template file uh, to be used by, uh, by private VAR. Let's open one of them, uh, configure daily here. So you see here, let me see. And they are, they are wrapped, so that's a no wrap here. So you see, we have a lot of options here, uh, a lot of options here, but uh, not so complicated. You can just change some of them for sophisticated processing. But if you don't know any of them, you can just use the template to do some uh, corresponding processing. Uh, for the daily template here, configure template daily, is for daily data processing. If you want to estimate one position per day or estimate uh, Zenith troposphere delays, you can use this template. An hourly template means the second one is for some data processing strategies for short periods of data. If you have only one hour data or just a few tens of minutes data, you can use this, uh, this configuration file for processing. And the mobile uh, is used for shipborne and airborne data. Uh, someone may be curious about whether the software can process the real data, for example, from Grace or, or Champ or, or Ghost. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't supported this kind of processing. We tried, but uh, there are some problems for data editing, uh, especially for Grace data. So we haven't, we just turned it off. So you can only use uh, this software to process mobile data, mobile platforms data on the ground rather than in the space. And then the final one is the for hybrid GNSS. Uh, it's, uh, it's for seismic stations. For example, if you, some of you guys may are doing earthquake studies. You want to use uh, process uh, 50 hertz, 10 hertz GNSS data. And this, uh, this configuration file is for you to process uh, the data successfully. All right. 
Okay, let us start to do some uh, examples here. Uh, this is the batch script. Let me uh, make it larger here. The batch script, uh, how to run the batch script, uh, uh, PDP3. Uh, so in the photo script, you can find the shell script named the PDP3. Uh, this is the command, uh, command format for PDP3. So the first one is the control file or the configuration file, uh, just the template, the four templates I showed you. So you need the control file to be uh, to be uh, to follow the PDP three, and then we have the start date and the end date for the data processing span. I mean, from which day you want to process, and you from which day you want to end your processing. So the start date and the end date, they have the, some some designated format. I will show you later on, and this is a site means which site you are going to process, and this is mode for uh, static mode or kinematic mode or uh, fixed mode means for CTD as solutions, you have to uh, tightly constrain your positions before you can estimate your CTD precisely. Uh, and interval uh, means the sampling rate of your data, for example, one seconds or uh, 0 0.02, 50 hertz data or 30 seconds data. You have to indicate your interval here. And AR means whether you are going to resolve ambiguities or not. So most of the time you may want to float solutions, then you can, you can set N, set N here, and uh, the N difference ambiguity resolution will not be carried out and only the float solution will be generated. All right. Um, so after successfully running the test Mac, you can actually have a few yeah, examples. Wait, Jeffrey, can I ask a question uh, here? Yes. Can I ask so what's the difference between the float solution and the uh, fixed solution in terms of ambiguity? Um, so after you, uh, normally after you fix the ambiguities to integers, because the, uh, the ambiguities have the property of integers, right? So this, uh, they are the integer cycles, unknown integer cycles between, in the distance between the satellite and the receivers. So they have that property. If you, in the list of squares estimation, you actually don't know which, which parameters are integers by the, the I mean, the estimator doesn't, uh, doesn't know which parameters are integers. So they will, it will pr process all of the unknown parameters as real valued estimates. So after that, you can try, you can choose to fix uh, the ambiguities to integers. And in this process, you can reversely improve the position, uh, the estimation precision of other parameters like the, your coordinates, uh, your troposphere, and your uh, your receiver clocks, because you have uh, fixed ambiguities to integers. That means you have added some tight constraints, some integer constraint on your unknown uh, parameters, and this kind of constraint can be taken as pseudo observations to improve your estimation uh, estimation precision. Uh, in terms sure, of sure. the theory of a list of squares adjustment. Okay, does the code Gunner? force the uh, does the code force the uh, um, the uh, PPP AR to the nearest integer of the float solution, or it has some more advanced method to 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 determine the final ambiguity resolution? Did you? Uh, get sorry, I, I don't question? get you. I don't get you. Yeah, yeah, so my question was, does the software force the final ambiguity to the nearest integer of the float solution or it has more advanced method to determine the ambiguity? Because okay. in the first uh, round, you determine your float solution, you determine yes. a float number in terms of the ambiguity. And then in, a sec in the next iteration, it's gonna be an integer for the ambiguity. I, what I'm trying to ask is how do you, you know, Thanks. make that? Yeah, from, from float number make the to, decision, to right? Instagram. Yeah, yeah, how do you make the decision? Maybe it's too technical, but just, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, it's, okay, okay, no worry. It's a, it's a, it's a good question. Actually, we are, we, we, we fix the ambiguities to their, to the most appropriate, appropriate integers according to the stochastic information of the ambiguities from the, Float solution. So after the float solution, you can have the, uh, the ambiguity estimates, right? And then as well as the variance and the covariance matrix of the ambiguities. So we will input these two information, the real valued ambiguity estimates, uh, as well as the co variance covariance matrix of the ambiguities into 
a search engine, for example, the Lambda method uh, to, to make a decision on which integer numbers are the most appropriate candidates for this float ambiguities. And then uh, that's based on some kind of stochastic information. And uh, we make a decision based on them to, uh, to make the best decision according to the knowledge of the float solution. And then we finally fix these uh, float ambiguities to those integers that we think the best. Okay, okay, thank, thank you so much. Right. Yeah, it's, it's clear now. You're welcome, okay. you're welcome. There's also okay. a hand raised from uh, Luis Moya. Luis, mm -hmm. do you want to unmute? Yeah. Yeah, hello. Thank you. Thank you. Just a, a quick question. Uh, you mentioned the, the folder that called is called product, and you get actually you gave us a copy in case we cannot uh, get it from internet. I, I was wondering, is this uh, are those files? Do we have to uh, like find by ourselves if we want to try another cases that are not in the examples? Uh, sure sorry, you, can, can you rephrase your question? Yeah, let, let's say, for example, if I product? want to run, uh -huh, uh -huh. is mm -hmm. this product like specifically for, for the examples in the, uh, the, the that gains by default in the software? I mean, yes. if, if, I yes. if I want to run another example, like a particular case of my work, I have to find mm -hmm. my products file also, I mean, download it for, from IGS oh. or, oh, I or see. The, the software download by itself. Okay, I see, I see. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, uh, you don't need to worry about anything about the product if you have internet access. So the batch script, the PVP3, this batch script will deal with which products to download and which products to use automatically without any worry from the users. So uh, oh, I just I uploaded the products yesterday because I'm worried about whether all of you guys have internet access from your computer. I know some of you guys you maybe use some some computers some computers to see to watch this video and but but using some using another computer to uh, to process the data and that computer may be off from the internet and then you don't have that capability you, then you have to copy the products I uploaded yesterday to the product directory to enable the processing that's why I did it yesterday but actually if you don't have any uh, any internet uh, if you have any uh, have uh, internet access, you don't need to worry about that. You can process any day and the product will be downloaded automatically automatically by the batch script. Oh, great, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. All right, so here, um, so let's do some do some example here. Uh, just uh, before, we, before we have a break, we just wanna show you one example uh, here. For example, template here, we PDP3, we can copy this command here, we copy it. Let's do, all right, just show you why we have the products here. I want to remove all of my products here because I have downloaded all of products here and it will not be re-downloaded if you process the data from the same day. But here I want to show you how the software can, uh, can download all of the products automatically. I want to remove my products here. All right, so I have only reserved the current product here but we're not going to use them anymore. All right, so here you can um, press the command. Oh, right, got, got it wrong. Let me see. Let me uh, just uh, stop it. So you see here, uh, I used, uh, okay. so I just copied the command here, PDP3, and this is template file. And this is uh, 2020, uh, January the 1st. So this is the Chinese style of, of the for the time input. I know in America you want to use January the first and the 2020. So in China we want to we would normally put the year before the month, the month and the, and the day date. So here, so the 2020 zero, uh, zero one zero one, the first day of the year of 2020, and this is start date and this is the end date, and this is station name ABMF and uh, it's a static mode. So you want to process uh, one position for 24 hours and this is 30 second interval. And you can use capital letters or, uh, or long capital letters as well. So N means a no ambiguity resolution. So after we uh, have this command here, you have to run this command uh, where the, your config configuration file is. 
because I put my configuration file in the example, so I run this command in the example directory as well. So here, uh, so then we can press, uh, so here you can see it, uh, it's preparing the initial position. Now it's downloading the product, right? You see here, the WM product is downloading here automatically, even if we don't have the product in our product directory. Um, so now SBP means we have prepared the a priori positions of this station using uh, the pseudo range uh, positioning. So here, this is downloading the OBX file, which is a little bit larger than the previous two, four files here. The ATX file is done. The ATX means the IGS uh, antenna uh, corrections. And uh, all right, this is data pre-processing. We use TADIT to, uh, to, determine, to determine the cycle slips and outlier ob observations. And now we come to the data, uh, data cleaning means the iteration for smaller uh, cycle slips and the small outliers detection. So here, this is the first iteration. So this one shows uh, we have a lot of satellites here. We have GLONASS GPS and Galileo and the, and, and, the, and the Beidou satellites for all four systems. So this number shows the, shows the residuals of that satellites. So the larger, Larger ones, is, you can see here, this is too large, so we don't have any space to print it out. This means these satellites have bad observations. So we need to redo, do some iteration to clean it. So after the second, second iteration, uh, the C32 has a smaller residuals here, 27 centimeters, so carry phase. So after a few, we can, uh, after a few iterations, we can newly remove some uh, lot liar observations and add some new ambiguities here. So you can see we have after several iterations to uh, process the data. Uh, so now we still have some newly removed observations here for 512 uh, observations to be removed. All right, so now we have, uh, we don't have any more. Uh, that means this is the final, uh, final processing of the iteration. So after that, so see, because we don't fix the ambiguities, so then the processing is done here. So after this, uh, you can have the results to be prepared. Okay, so before we can go into the directory to see what's happening uh, there, uh, we want to have a break for about 10 minutes. Do you um, like doing an up arrow one time or two times? Let us see that command one more time. Okay, okay. Yeah, Just, perfect, uh, thank you. This is the thank you. Uh, this is the okay. Do you want me to press 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 the uh, the button? No, to run no, it no, again? no. I just I I want to okay. be able to okay. type it in. Thank okay, you. okay, okay, okay. And and there was a question. Um, Cecilio had his hand raised, and he had a question in the chat as well. And there's some other questions in the chat. All right. Let me see. Uh, you want to speak up, Cecilio? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, related to uh, Luis Moya question, is there uh, any option to use another product from IGS, like maybe from GFZ of, or GPL or another product about the higher uh, product from IGS, not only Wuhan product? Thank you. Yes, you can. Uh, we will cover that topic the day after tomorrow, you know, the second, second part of the, of the course. So we have another course. This is for advanced, uh, advanced processing. Uh, I will show you, actually, I have prepared some products. Uh, let me go to the product, right? The product here. So now you see a WUM products have been downloaded here, just to answer the question by the previous uh, trainees. Uh, and then we have the COM product here. This is from code. So we can also try their product, product as well. Uh, but then you need to change the configuration file, make some changes there. Uh, this is for some sophisticated, proce sophisticated processing. So I will cover this topic the day after tomorrow. Uh, today we are going to, we are only using the uh, config configuration template file to do the processing using only the batch processing mode because this is easier for you to handle and uh, you're not going to see, if you want to see the configuration file, I'll just show you. Um, 
it may be some headache for you, right? Sometimes if you know have, because, um, because you, you, may need, you need to understand what's the meaning of these options, right? You run this directory, table directory, and the product directory, set a warbit, ERP, quaternions, and strict editing. And we have some, uh, some notes here, but not so clear, uh, and then remove ambiguity, GTD model. HDG means horizontal troposphere gradient model, right? A gradient model and atmosphere second means higher order, higher order atmosphere delays. We're not going to do any correction here today. And the tides, solid earth tides and ocean loading, ocean tidal loading, pole tides. And we have ambiguity fixing, ambiguity fixing options. For example, 600 seconds, cut of elevation, PCO on wide lane. So some kind of advanced options, wide lane decision, narrow lane decision, and the critical, critical search for the lambda method. And these are the list of satellites, right? So GPS satellites and uh, GLONASS satellites and Galileo satellites and the Compass and the Beidou satellites and as well as QZSS, J, the four QZSS satellites as well. And finally, we have the station options for, uh, for a, a kilometric mode or S or static mode, a GMF or VMF or VMF, uh, VMF3. So you can have several options to do. And uh, this is elevation cutoff angle and then it play a stochastic constraint of a troposphere and a st stochastic constraint for a horizontal gradient. And this is uh, the a priori precision of your pseudo range and the care phase measurements. Um, this is the a, a priori constraint of your positions, right? So uh, actually it's not so difficult, but I need to introduce this later on before we start uh, to use uh, the products from other ACs from COM, uh, this is a very good example to use their products. You can also try GFZ products as well, if you can find them. But the, but the, uh, the batch script, the PDP3, uh, will only use the WUM products. If you use PDP3 to process data, it's just like the Gypsy's G2P, uh, it will use only the JPL's products as well. So if you use PDP3, it will only download the, um, the Wuhan University products to do the processing, uh, right? So this is, uh, so am I answered the question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, good, thank you. So let's just have a break for about five minutes or 10 minutes. You can uh, just uh, relax and uh, we still have one and a half hour Oh, one hour, we have one hour to finish uh, the basic processing.
Okay, shall we shall we come back? Hello? All right. Yeah. All right, okay. Uh, let's can come we, back to our yes. I was just gonna say, can we run through some of the questions that were going through the chat um, that may not have gotten answered? <laughs> All right, okay. Let's uh, let's see. Uh, it's, a, it's really a lot of questions. Don't miss some of them. Oh, you're not found. Okay. From where can we start? To... There, there, I, I can read some of them. John DeSanto asks, what is a short period of data, 24 hours? Also, can the mobile config file support high rate one second processing? Uh, yes, uh, the shortest period is not limited. You can also use five minutes or uh, one minute, and that's okay. Uh, the problem is uh, for PPP processing, uh, shorter periods of data will not uh, lead to good results because the ambiguities will not converge within, within a few minutes. Uh, normally, we need to use at least one hour data before we can have some reasonable or decent solutions. Uh, so I'd like to use at least one hour of data before we can do PVP, but you can also use half an hour. That's, uh, that depends on you. If you have multiple constellations, you have GPS, GLONASS, and Galileo data to be inside one file. I think half an hour of data will be enough for you to have uh, reasonable results. I will show you that. So uh, we can also have, uh, we can process up to 50 Hertz data. So no matter, whether it's a static station or a mobile stations. So if you have uh, 50 Hertz uh, data from, a, from an airplane, it's okay, we can process it, but you will wait for a long, long time. If your station span is over several hours or even one day, I just process 15 minutes, 550 Hertz data, 15 minutes, 50 Hertz data. Uh, it spends me about um, 10 minutes to finish that processing. So just, just for 15, 15 minutes, if you process one hour of 50 Hertz data, 50 Hertz data, that will take you maybe one hour or so. I, I never tried that, tried that. My students tried that, they waited for a long time to, to finish the processing, but it doesn't, it, it's not a limited. You can use up to 50 Hertz for any, for any platform. Um, I think some of you guys have some problem for PDP3 not found. Uh, an installation. I think you may have some problem in the installation. Uh, you never, you may, you may not, you may not pass the test yesterday if you install the install the uh, the software. Uh, if you don't have that, you can copy. For example, for uh, for this guy, you can copy the um, because the PDP three is just. Here, if you go to the first the directory of the software, you can see the scripts right here. You can go to the scripts here. There are PDP3 Mac and PDP3. And this is for Mac and this is for Linux. So you can copy PDP3 Mac to your pride directory. This is the pride directory bin directory as PDP3, change the name to PDP3. And uh, that will be okay for you to find that um, script. So this is a solution to, to that problem. Um, restart the terminal, I think. Uh, this, is a, this is a batch script. It's not an executable of uh, any way, uh, operating system. Linux or shell. Uh, hi. Yes. Yeah, so I'm the one who's having that problem. Uh, okay, I see I actually do not even have that script in my scripts directory. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, try and redo the installation again. I only okay, have okay. Pride uh, Mac SH and Pride PPP AR SH. Um, okay. So I think I missed something maybe. Okay. Thanks. Uh, okay, you're welcome. And someone may you may, may use a bash RC uh, rather than bash profile. Uh, we actually tried to use bash RC in Mac, 
it, it caused some problem for our computers. Maybe uh, we don't uh, think about so much, uh, so many things in advance, uh, possibly. Uh, but if you would like to use, uh, pre would like to use batch RC as your configuration of your Mac system, it's okay. You need to change the. Uh, uh, for example, you when you, you install when you install the software for here, you need to change that. Uh, this is a very simple installation pro, uh, script, so you can you can do it yourself. It's not so complicated compared to some other software for a very complicated installation. Uh, we have the install Mac, for Mac. We use the Bash profile for Linux. We use the Bash RC. You can change this to Bash RC if you like. If you like to uh, to do that, uh, that will uh, if that makes uh, your system work. All right, this is uh, uh, all right. Yeah, you need to configure the path of your system to find the private PVAR bin in your local directory. All right, okay. Uh, interval, it seems the same, all four examples. Not, not the same. Uh, the interval, uh, the interval means the sampling rate of the, let me show you the test Mac. For the test Mac, uh, this is the test that we are going to run if, uh, after your installation. You see here, uh, we, have, we can use one as well. We can use one. The one second means high rate data, means one hertz data. If you have 50 hertz data, you should write 0 0.2 here, just like uh, here, you, you should use uh, 0 0.2. This is for 50 hertz data. So you need to change the interval. Uh, because uh, because sometimes we uh, sometimes some people may want to all, although they have one hertz data, but they still want to process thirty second data, so they can change the sampling rate here from one hertz to uh, to thirty seconds uh, to have the position to have the processing uh, quickly uh, finished. So um, so this is why this is the reason why we should why we we needed to push the interval here means the sampling rate of your Renex data. So this is here. Okay, uh, I think all of the questions have been answered. That's, that's, uh, we don't have enough time to finish all of that, right? Uh, this is the screen output. I wanted to show you some very simple explanation on the screen output. Uh, because when you, pro we, uh, when you do your processing, you need to monitor, you need to have a look at the, this screen output to judge whether your processing is successful and why it is not successful. For example, here, this is after we uh, press the button here and it begins to check the, the executables, whether they are there. And uh, this is the configuration for your command line, for your argument for which station and what position mode for kilomatic or static and control file and where is the control file. So it shows the path for your con config template hourly here and then the switch, yes or no. And this is the process a single day. So, and this is a prepared a priori position using SPP. And this is the command there. And when it was run here at, at this time, and these are the arguments for the SPP. Executed okay means fine. All right, we, we have got that successfully. And the second, the following one is pre uh, prepare products, just as you have seen uh, the uh, WGET progress show, uh, you see how the products are downloaded. If you don't have the appropriate IGS ATEX file, uh, this file will be downloaded as well. Uh, it will be very, very slow because this file is very, very large. It's about 80 meg, uh, megabytes, 80 megabytes. So it takes about normally uh, for about a few minutes before you can uh, finish the downloading of this file. Um, and then we have data pre-processing. Pre-processing means before we start the list of squares, we needed to do some editing for the data to detect the outliers, outlier observations and the cycle slips in the ambiguities or the carry phase measurements. So we have a lot of options here. You don't need to understand all of the options. You just to see, okay, right, this command has been executed okay. And then we can go to the next stage, uh, which is the data cleaning. Uh, this is an iteration between two commands. The first one is uh, LSQ, the list of squares. And the second one is radic, which means uh, to, uh, to detect the smaller cycle slips and uh, outliers after we finish the tadded software 
the tidy command in the pre-processing. So this iteration will uh, detect some very, very small cycle sleep for about the one cycle sleep or some very small uh, outlier solutions here. And for each, uh, for each constellation, we will, sh we will show the residuals of the carrier phase. But first one, the first line is for uh, GPS, second one for GLONASS, and the third one for Galileo, and the fourth for Beidou, and the fifth for QZSS. So these numbers are in the unit of millimeters for the carrier phase. So normally the good, uh, a, good, a good quality of data indicates a smaller, a uh, smaller number here. For example, six millimeter means the GPS-01 uh, data uh, are in very good quality. And for large ones, sometimes like 90, one, 90 millimeters means, all right, G27 must have some outliers, outlier observations or cycle slips. So then it will need some further iteration to detect the cycle slips or outlier solution. So here, this is a report for how many, how many observations has been identified in this iteration. So we need to make them all both zero before we can access this iteration. Okay, after the iteration, we can do ambiguity fixing. And then uh, in, the, in the last run, we didn't uh, enable this. So you didn't see this, but if you enable it on, and then you can see this output. So this is for the ambiguity resolution at a single station for G wide lane and narrow lane. Uh, you don't need to understand what is wide lane or narrow lane if you don't have this knowledge. Just to know the first one is G for GPS, for GPS and good fixing. The uh, second one is for Galileo fixing. And the third one is for, uh, if you have for the, for the Beidou and the good fixing. And then for, uh, so the MG means multi-genesis or put them all. Uh, so you can add 35 to 21 is 56. So this is the fixing rate after integer rounding. And this is the first trial for integer ambiguity resolution. It's not so strict. It's just try. It, it just uh, It's just. Uh, it's just trying to uh, to to quantify the prob uh, the quality of your float ambiguity estimates using this method. The final solution will be based on lambda search. So based on the uh, float ambiguity estimates as well as the various covariance information of those ambiguities. So then we have the, we need to search for the correct integer candidates and then to finalize which ones are the best solution for those float ambiguities. So final fixing rate is uh, within 14 ambiguities with fixing, uh, with fixed 11. This is for one hour data. So the fixing rate is 78.6% for one, uh, for, the, uh, for the hourly data. So after that, we can uh, we do the final solution. So the final solution will be run again, uh, the, list, the list of squares by introducing the ambiguity constraint. You see here, this is the ambiguity constraint, means after we fix the ambiguities, we can introduce uh, the constraint to, uh, to, uh, to improve the estimates of your coordinates and uh, then the troposphere delays. All right, uh, so this is the output. So let's go into directory to see what kind of output we have produced just now. So we just run this uh, ABMF because ABMF stations has already in the data directory, uh, we start here. So you can see we have the data directory here in the example directory. So these products, we go to data, see where the data, data are. So we see the year 2020 and the first day, you can see the data is here, right? So the data is here. This is where you can find the data. Uh, okay, let's come. Let's go back to uh, the directory we run the script. So results are here. This is the year directory. Uh, because we are we are we were processing the year of 2020. You can go there. Uh, go to that directory. Go to 001 day, <clears throat> and this is are the processing results. So let's show you here. Uh, okay. All right, this is not good. Uh, it's not so clear, right? Because this is too, all right, okay. So these are the results. So you can see the following, uh, the final uh, eight files uh, ended with the name of the stations. And the, these previous files are the information we needed to uh, enable PPP. <clears throat> so this is a residual file, shows uh, what the residuals uh, are. And these are the receiver clock. So let's show you one by one to what they mean here. Uh, let's come to uh, the solution file. 
So ABMF, because we are doing one solution per day, one static estimate. So this is the position file here. Let's open it, open it, VI uh, position file. Uh, all right, okay. Uh, the head information is very affluent. So you see a lot of information here. And this shows actually what kind of options you have used to produce this solution. So you never, uh, okay, Elizabeth, do you have any question about anything? Yes, I can wait until you finish this part. Not I can hear you. It's quite small voice. Um, can you hear me better now? Yes. Um, so my question, I can wait. But basically, I was asking if uh, CPP Pride also works with um, rapid and ultra rapid products from IGS. I, I think I might be able to help her. her, her your sound keeps going in and out, Elizabeth. Um, but she asked in the chat can Pride PPP also automatically retrieve and use IGS ultra, ultra rapid and rapid products? Um. Yes, uh, yes, it can. It can use the ultra rapid orbit to uh, products to process the data. But then you, for example, here we show we use five products to do the processing. If you use the ultra rapid orbit and the clock, uh, uh, the ultra rapid orbit, but 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 we don't have the ultra rapid clock, right? The ultra rapid clock is uh, have have an interval of only five minutes. Then you need to interpolate the set of clock products into 30 seconds or one second as well uh, to do the processing. And that will uh, damage the position precision, but you can do that. I will show you the day after tomorrow when we uh, use some other products to enable the processing. Uh, but for the ultra rapid, the ultra rapid IGES products, you don't have the set of bias product like this or set of attitude. So these two uh, products will be uh, vacant there and you can only do ambiguity flow to solutions. And the ERP is fine, ERP, we can find the ERP. So I'll show you that after the day after tomorrow, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, let's come to this, uh, showing the information you have used for the processing. So you can check that afterwards, whether you have done the processing uh, correctly. So you see here, ambiguity fixing mill no, because we didn't do any fixing at this run. All right, so this is uh, uh, the uh, field the description for each column. So this is all the uh, positions, right? At the position estimate in X, Y, Z. And the following are the various covariance, covariance information for this position. And station name, the dev, uh, the, dev uh, the, uh, the, uh, the modified, modified Julian day, X, Y, and Z. Maybe you don't know whether this is precise or not. Uh, let me show you whether we can find a, um, let me let me find a reference uh, find a reference solution. Uh, we have a tool Senex Seed for AB uh, ABMF station, so it's 2020 01, 01, to find the Senex solution for this station. So let's go to get that. So we will retrieve the correct solution for this station, right? So this is the estimate from Senex file from IGS 20 SSC. So we can see the X coordinate is 85.790. So we have the uh, 85.790 as well uh, in the millimeter level estimation. And the second one is uh, 44.957, uh, 44.965, uh, 65, so it's about eight millimeters, eight millimeters difference here. And this is the, uh, the Z coordinates. So 04859, uh, 04861, so two millimeters. So normally it's within, uh, it's within uh, five, around five millimeters. Uh, the vertical may be a little bit different. Uh, so the biggest errors exist in the vertical component. So it's very close to the IGS solution here, I just leave it here, right. Uh, these are the position file. Uh, so then we come to, that's a very, well, we are, we are progressing slowly. The second one is the, uh, this is the, um, 
All right, this is the description for the field, for, the, for each field. For example, the year, month, a day, hour, and uh, for the receiver clock. So we see here, uh, let's go to RCK file. This file is not of your major concern because uh, I, I don't think anybody is going to start with the receiver clock. If I know someone here, uh, no, All right, okay. So these are the receiver clock estimates. So you see here for each, uh, for each column, we have the explanation for, uh, for the values here. So this is for receiver clock for GPS, for GLONASS and uh, Galileo, and this is for beta three satellites. Because we don't have any beta two satellites here, so they are zero. And we don't have any QZS satellites, so they are zero as well. Uh, this is for the receiver clock. So RCK file. Uh, then we come to the solution for almost free ambiguities. The ambiguity file is quite important because we are going to use it for ambiguity resolution. They are started with A and B. So this contains the ambiguity file. Uh, it includes the information for, for the processing strategies, uh, summary, and uh, these are the, and the ambiguities for G01 and R09 for the almost free ambiguity, wonderland ambiguity, and there's a sigma here. So I'm sure just, uh, just a quick look at that. All right. And then we come to uh, integer, this is our integer ambiguity constraint. We haven't started to constrain the ambiguity, so we don't have this count file, but I'll try that later on. All right. These are the uh, horizontal gradient, horizontal troposphere gradient. So these are the HTG file, HTG file here. So we have, because we estimate them every 12 hours. So this is for the, uh, north and south troposphere gradient. And this is uh, east and west troposphere gradient here. So these are a priori values, and these are the corrections. So you need to add them together to have that correction. Uh, then we have the, uh, the log file. The log file contains the information for the uh, observation quality. For example, this is the log file for the first epic zero hour, zero minutes, and zero seconds, we have the G01 to have a new ambiguity to the set. And for G03, we remove it because it's at low elevation, smaller than seven degrees. So then this observation, this satellite was removed in our processing. So for each epic, it has a very detailed recording and you can analyze the data, the data quality according to this file. And then we come to the, uh, uh, the post file. Post file has been uh, talked about, right? So we're not going to repeat it. Then this is the RCK file, the receiver clock. We have showed that for each column represents one system. And then this for the residuals application of the, of the solution. The residuals are in the RES file. Uh, maybe you are, not familiar, you are not interested in this, but for some advanced users, you need to see whether the residuals are good or not. So you can open this file to see uh, whether this is the carapace residuals. These are the syringe residuals. Uh, so they're very small in the, in, the, in, the, in the unit of a meter here. And uh, these are for the observations we used for this satellite. So L1C, L2W, C1W, C2W. All right, okay. Um, for each very detail, these are the STD file for the statistics of the residuals. STD file. So you can see the, uh, uh, you can see here for each satellite, we have the residuals here. So you can use this, uh, uh, this uh, information to plot the residuals distribution. I'm not going to, all right, just uh, have a quick look. All right, so we haven't uh, started to, uh, to do the uh, ambiguity fixing. So let's try one, uh, try once more for the ambiguity fixing. Uh, we use PDP three again. Uh, here, let me stop oh, here. So we use PDP three for A and B, A B, uh, A B M F, and then we can do change N from N to Y to enable the ambiguity fixing. So let's do it again to see uh, what kind of results we are going to have. Um, right, it will take uh, take a. Few, uh, few tens of seconds. Um, so this is the once more processing, let's see. So just now we just used the float solution, float, float solution there. And, uh, um, 
and no ambiguity fixing was uh, was enabled. And here we do uh, see how that can be improved. Some additional output will be produced in, in this process. So you can send here. Okay, so we see here, uh, now we got the fixed solution in the final steps uh, after we introduced the constraint of the integer ambiguities. All right, so we have cross, uh, finished everything here. Let's go back to the screen output for the ambiguity fixing here. So you see, uh, these are the ambiguity fixing statistics for integer rounding. So you see here for GPS, for Galileo, for uh, Beta 2 and the Beta 3. Uh, ambiguity fixing. So we see here the ambiguity fix rate is over 90%. Uh, for Galileo, it has the highest performance. Uh, beta 2, we don't have so many stations, uh, so many satellites for the beta 2, beta 2 constellation. So its fixing rate is relatively low and compared to, in terms of, in terms of its low number of ambiguity uh, satellites. And then for beta 3, we have about 80% of ambiguity fixing rates. Uh, this is uh, the information. So in total, the ambiguity fixing rate is uh, as, as high as 96%. Uh, this is ambiguity fixing. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, that uh, results directory again to go there. So you can see the results. We can have a new file here, com file. This com file shows the integer ambiguities we have achieved for the processing. So there are two integers here. For each and for each each pair of ambiguities here, for Galileo and the compass and the solution. So let's see the position file again. We can see um, now we have the new uh, estimates. This is these are the uh, are the improved uh, ambiguity fixed uh, daily positions compared to uh, the flow solution. It improves a little bit because the twenty four hour solutions uh, solutions are already good in the case of flood solution. Compared to the fixed was 957, okay, 958. Now the, the Y component, the Y component has been better. Uh, in the flow solution, uh, there is an offset about eight millimeters, but now it's only one millimeter, right? 958 and 957, and uh, uh, 859, 859, this is uh, 860. So it's uh, only about one millimeter difference from the IGS solutions here. Uh, that shows how the ambiguity fixing can improve the positioning performance of PPP. All right, so um, let's, uh, okay, let's plot some of the files. So we have the plotting capabilities here. Uh, we just see some numbers here. How can we visualize the solutions? Uh, uh, because we are doing the static solution, so there's only one position, we're not going to plot any uh, plot any trajectories of the stations, but all in plots, uh, plot the residuals. For example, using the using using the Python uh, Python scripts, uh, we had to follow, which is followed by the residual file here, and this is the plot residual file uh, for which satellite you are going to uh, you are going to uh, plot. For example, C twenty, C twenty four. Whether do we have C twenty four? Okay, we have. C24. So this is the residuals we have. Uh, maybe some of you guys know, are not, uh, are not uh, interested in this. Um, some, ag some professionals may be interested in the residuals, uh, uh, residuals of this processing. So the first one is the carry phase residuals. The second one is the pseudo range residuals. So in terms of the, the red ones, red lines shows the elevation of the satellite. So you see, you can also uh, exaggerate. I'm zooming on the plot to see the, uh, the the residuals. All right, 
Okay. Now we have the, we also have a have a figure to be uh, stored here as uh, as you are following usage. So you can open it. Uh, this is the uh, the C twenty four uh, for the Beidou satellite. This is the, um, uh, the the residuals for that satellite. Right. Okay. This is the plot of the residuals. You can see uh, it's quite easy to use. All right. This is the residuals for another satellite, and uh, there's a troposphere delay. So you may be interested in the troposphere delay. This is the ZTD file. So ZTD file contains the troposphere estimation. Uh, we have the header information, and this is the estimation. But then you need to pay attention that this uh, estimation of troposphere may be not so accurate because we are estimating the positions of ABMF as well. Normally, if, you, if, your, if your goal is to estimate troposphere, you'd better, you'd better tightly constrain your coordinates to the IGS, IGS solutions. And then you can get a very accurate troposphere estimation. I will show that later on. So these are the dry part, and these are the, the two part contains the, uh, the wet part, the wet component of the troposphere. So you have to add all of them, all three numbers together to have the final estimate of the troposphere in terms of meters, right? In terms of meters for each epoch. Okay, uh, the troposphere. We can also plot the troposphere. Let's see, Paula, we can have a CTD uh, plot as well. Plot a CTD troposphere and ABMF to, to, be, uh, to be the name of the figure. So you see plot troposphere here. Uh, this is a troposphere estimated along with the ABMF solution. So you see here uh, the troposphere. This troposphere may be not so accurate because uh, they, the positions are also estimated as well. So uh, we, we need to try that later on to uh, re-estimate them. Okay. Um, so this is troposphere and uh, we come back to, so we have finished the, uh, the static solution. Let's come back to uh, to do a, do, a, do a solution for, uh, for a fixed solution. We just do directly the, uh, uh, the fixed solution. Uh, we're not going to do any flow solution anymore. All right, okay. So come back to this directory because we are using the uh, uh, configuration template as well here. Let's paste, oh, sorry. because I'm using the wrong name here. This should be hourly. So PDB3 hourly and, uh, and uh, I'm not using Baco. I just use, uh, I want to use ABMF again as well. Case okay, 30 seconds. And uh, we need to uh, modify the time 0101, January the 1st, um, 0101. So this is the time, correct time. So 2020, January the 1st, uh, kinematic daily, still so do daily. So we do daily here. Uh, do you see this command? So you see here, uh, we just use, um, you actually just needed to change the, uh, the S option to K option from previous uh, arguments. And then we can have the 24 hour uh, daily climatic solution for ABMF stations. So let's try to do it again. And uh, no, uh, no satellite products will be downloaded again because they are already there in our product directory. So you will see uh, there's no downloading process again here. It's just processing uh, the data again for, uh, for the kilomatic mode. So let's see uh, the kilomatic solution. It, it may take a few tens of seconds because it needs to do some iteration for data uh, pre-processing. Uh, this iteration is necessary because we needed to uh, identify all of the smaller, small, Cycle slips and the small outliers, they are uh, they are jeopardy to the high precision processing, precision positioning. Uh, before it finishes, we can uh, continue with this uh, slice. So we have the kilomatic coordinates like this. This is the kin file. It's not from. It's different from the position file. The position file post file is only contains only one coordinate. It's daily estimation. But the kin file, the kin file here. Uh, contains uh, epic wise positions for each, for example, X, Y, Z position and uh, longitude, the latitude and height. And uh, then how many satellites are contributing to this position estimate? For example, we have 20 satellites, eight GPS, 
uh, six uh, GLONET and six Galileo satellites. And this is a PDOP value, which is epic, right? Um, okay, now we have, we have finished the processing. Um, so we can go to, so we can go to the resolved directory uh, here. So we have a new file, kin file here. Uh, we can open it, kin file. So this, um, let me set no wrap here. So these are the X, Y, Z coordinates. And these are the uh, latitude, longitude. And this is a number of satellites contributing to the estimation of this position. Uh, we can plot uh, the position as well. So plot king, Python, and king file, A, B, M, F. So this, the command, command, uh, this is the command is visualize the results. Uh, we see here, uh, these are the estimation for the, uh, uh, right. Okay. So you see here, these are the uh, results for the kinematic solutions. So for the east component, the north component, the up component, and this is the standard deviation for the for the positions. So in the horizontal component, we can have better one, better than one centimeter position and accuracy compared to the mean position. And the vertical component can have a precision of two centimeters. And this should the up value and the satellite number to be used, or, which are used for uh, the solution here. Uh, for some part of the, here you can also uh, you can also zoom in it to to have a look at. Uh, the, the the solutions, all right. So this for the kinematic solution. Let's uh, let's go back to the script, and you can also use the reference coordinates to plot it because sometimes you want to see whether how uh, how far away of your kinematic position from the truth. So we can use this reference reference position from the IGS to replot the kin file. So you can just copy uh, the uh, three coordinates here. This is the X, Y, Z coordinate from the IGS to replot uh, the, uh, the file again. So you see here, uh, so you can see uh, for the three components compared with uh, the IGS coordinates, you see uh, the horizontal component is still better than one centimeter and the vertical is better than uh, 2.5 centimeters uh, against the IGS reference. Right, uh, okay. Not, uh, so we have spent a lot of time on this. These are the plots. I'm not going to repeat it. Repeat it this. Uh, the third example is uh, the uh, hourly solution. So we, we, we may have only one hour data. For example, for during the seismic data processing, nobody wants going to process 24 hours of data. So, so what about, what if we have only one hour data? Uh, this is the, we have a station here, um, CCJ2, uh, which has only one hour data. Let's come back to, here again, we can use, um, let me see. Here, we use the template hourly, right? So for short period of data processing strategies, and these are the dates for 2021, uh, July the 29th, and a CCJ2 station in K mode for kinematic processing for 30 second data, and we can uh, fix the ambiguity as well here. Uh, for example, we can run that. This can be finished quickly because we have only one hour of data. So now we see three uh, constellations. This, this station has very good data quality because the first iteration have produced very good, except for R12 and the G27, have larger residuals. But after that, we can do, right? So you see here it has been finished. It's just very, very quick, very fast. Uh, this is ambiguity, ambiguity fixing uh, status. So we fixed 78.6% uh, of the ambiguities. Uh, so 11 out of 14 ambiguities to be fixed. Uh, then we, uh, we have a second uh, uh, directory 2021. We go to, because the data is in the year of 2021, we go to 210. This is the result for CCJ2. So we see here, this is CCJ2 station. The output is similar to the kinematic solution for for the, for the ABMF in the previous example, we can still uh, plot, uh, plot the king file as king CCJ2, CCJ2. We can plot it to see how it look like, right? 
so this is the solution for um, for that for that station for about only one hour data. You see here from zero point, from zero o'clock to one o'clock here. So we see this is a kilometric solution for that station. Uh, we can we can we can uh, zoom in it to see some uh, see some details of it. So this is for one hour solution. It's uh it's quite directly quite direct. So you don't need to worry a lot about the product download uh, downloading and any other uh, any other uh, problems for the software. So this is a plotting of the results. Okay, let's come back to our final uh, topic today, which is uh, the seismic data processor for hybrid data. We use the example from this July uh, for the Alaska uh, magnitude eight, eight earthquake in Alaska. So we used AC twelve station, uh, which uh, which have the most significant signals from this earthquake uh, in terms of GPS solutions. Uh, we use AC12. The AC12 stations had been had been al already in our data directory, so you don't need to worry about where you can find it. For the hybrid data processing, we can uh, process the data up to 50 hertz. So the 50 hertz from uh, says so 50 uh, 50 observations per second. So it's quite quite hybrid data, up to uh, up to 30 seconds. So these are the range for our data processing. Uh, we can then okay. Let's try to. Let's try to see uh, run this command. Uh, we need to go back to the directory to this place for us to find for us to find the uh, uh, the control file. The control file is a seismic, right? You can see the seismic here, and this is the day for 2021, uh, July the 29th, 2021, July the 29th. AC12 station and K climatic mode, and one means one second data because this is one hertz data. So one uh, one position per per second, and the yes means uh, to fix and the ambiguities. So this will be very quick as well. Uh, we have only uh, you see here. All right, we need to download the pro the product. So you see here the product are being downloaded. You need to wait uh, a few more seconds before it can uh, write. I don't know whether you have run the command successfully, but. Uh, I will leave a few minutes uh, later to answer your questions. Uh, if you can install install your software correctly, uh, the processing are very very simple. You just need one command to finish all of the processing uh, using the examples here. If you have your own data, you need to learn how, where to put your data, and uh, and uh, that that will be fine. You can you'd better put your data in the data directory of the example uh, that will make you simply use the uh, the, configura uh, the configuration template to process the data. If you put your data any any other place, you need to modify the Rhinox directory in the configuration file uh, before the uh, program can find your data. So here we don't uh, say that because we have already our data all our data in the data directory under the example directory. Like I said, because it has only GPS GPS data, so the processing will be very fast. Uh, the data quality is quite good because in the first run we don't have any actually don't have any outliers here, right? It's all always zero, so the the quality is quite good for this station. Now the ambiguity fixing has been finished, so one hundred percent fixing rate for seven ambiguities to fix seven. This is one hour data as well, so. Uh, so the, quant the processing is quite quick as well. So let's go to uh, 210 as well. So you will see here, uh, we have two stations placed in this directory because CCJ2 is also on this day. The CCJ2 results will be stored there. And uh, we have a new station processing here as well. So the two station results will be put in the same directory. So these are the results for the CCJ AC12, uh, the seismic stations, uh, hybrid station. Let's plot it. Uh, plot king tie and uh, kilometric solution AC. You have to plot king, right? King file. And then AC12, uh, the name of the file. Uh, you can, so right, you see here, this is the result. Let me do a little zoom in. So you see here, this uh, the seismic signals are here, right? Seismic signals are here. This is the first uh, six hour to seven hour. So the one hour of data, one hour of hybrid data. Uh, you can uh, uh, zoom in in it. So this is the uh, seismic signals here. Uh, we can see 
you can see the signals very clearly uh, caused by the earthquake. So you see here in the horizontal plane for the east and north components, and this is for the up components. So uh, the noise is quite low. Uh, if you have more satellites, for example, from Galileo and uh, GLONASS, you can see uh, the noise can be even lower compared to uh, the current solution. We can see some uh, static offset here from previous earthquake and after the earthquake, they're about, about maybe about one centimeter offset compared to the previous solution, right? So you see here. So this is seismic data processing, right? Okay, uh, so this is a result and a result. So we have got all of this. Uh, we don't need to worry about uh, where we put the data because we have already put all of our data in the data directory here. If you can pl place your data here, then you don't need to change the directory, uh, the template file here. But if you put your data in some other places uh, in, your, uh, in your computer, you have to go inside the template file uh, to modify the Rhinox directory, <clears throat> to modify the Rhinox directory. Otherwise your program cannot find where your data are. So uh, this is uh, the, the, the point that you need to, <clears throat> you need to pay attention to, right? Okay. So I'd like to put the data here. So then uh, I don't need to worry about anything about the modification of the template file because some of you guys may be not expert on uh, the genus data processing and uh, you may be confused by the, by, the uh, by the template file and you don't know how to modify it or you make some bad uh, modification and the, Program program cannot recognize it, so this is uh, uh, this is an issue. Uh, right. Um, uh, do uh, this is uh, all for today. And the summary here: we uh, just do some basic processing using uh, the private PPP AR software for uh, for hybrid data processing, daily processing, and the kinematic processing, uh, and the impact of undifferent undifferenced ambiguity resolution. Uh, we will cover some other topics like uh, the uh, how to use some other ACs product like the ultra rapid or rapid product or uh, the products from GFZ to process the data as well, uh, other than only use the Wuhan University product and some other topics for, uh, for mobile platforms like airplanes to, uh, to, uh, to use uh, private VAR to do positioning. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, I would like to answer some questions before we close the session here. Um, all right, okay. Can you, uh, do you have any? Uh, yes, yes. I, I was just gonna say, there's a couple of people with their hands raised, uh, Luis um, Moya and Kang Wang. Uh, yes. Uh, just, just a simple question. Uh, sorry to insist again. So if I want to run, uh, uh, my own example, I just need to the observable, the Renix file observable to put in the data folder. Is it correct? Yes, if you don't want to make any modification of the mm -hmm. template file of the configura configuration template, you have to put your data here. Do you see my mouse here? So yep. you have to put data yes. in the data directory. You can go to the data directory and put the data in the year and uh, on the, uh, in the day directory and the year directory, for example, 2021 for the DOY of 2220. So you have to put them here. And also you have to follow the name, naming convention of IGS. So you cannot use just say, right, you have an, you have an observation and your observation name is cc.o. And this file okay. cannot be recognized by the software automatically. You have to follow the Renix file convention no matter whether it's long name or short name, this is a long name, we can recognize it. And you can use the Renex 2 names, which is much shorter like this. We can recognize both, but you cannot use any, just a, just a random name is not acceptable. So you have to I see, I uh, see. follow the naming convention, right? Okay. So, so this gives me a, a second example, a second question, sorry. Where, where can I have this name convention? This IGS naming convention? <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh, you can you can search for it. We have the uh, all right. We have Rhinox. Do you can you find this file? Um, this free files for the Rhinox uh, Rhinox uh, file format version three point zero five. Uh, you can find this file to uh, to read the okay, name. I think in the web. Long mm -hmm. name and the shorter names. Right. You got it. Okay, 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 thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, okay. You're welcome.
Can we do you want to go now? Yes, my uh, my question was about uh, one of the parameters in the config file. The, actually, it's the first parameter, which is the interval. It's uh, in all the four examples, it says 30. Does that really matter? Or you the uh, command line, when you input the uh, command, you also specify a sampling rate. Are they the same thing? Or I don't know, but I thought the interval in the config file will say something or control something, but it looks like all the four prime, all the four examples have the same value. Oh, uh, you mean you mean in uh, in uh, the configuration file we have? Let me see. Um, it's uh, it's written as thirty in all four examples, right? You mean here, right? Yes, that that parameter. Yes. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't need to care about the interval setting here. What you need to pay attention to is the command line. Command line is here. Is here. This is uh, the 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 uh, uh, the final interval or the final sampling rate of your Rennex file uh, is determined by this uh, argument one. So you not you don't need to pay attention pay any attention to the to the configuration templates, although it is 30 here, but this will be changed finally by the command line. So you can, okay. Uh, okay. You can go see. to the example here, um, 210, we just now process the data for, this is the final configuration file here within the data processing directory. This is the uh, configuration, uh, configuration file for station AC12. You can open it, you can see the interval has been set one. According to your uh, to your to your command line, you see here. I see. So, so okay. So the, basically, yeah. the command line will override the parameter about that parameter. Yeah, we right? override. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you are correct. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome, Elizabeth. You want to unmute yourself and ask your question. We cannot hear you. Uh, oh, uncertainty. I can see one question for the uncertainties of the position estimates. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any uncertainties report for the climatic solutions. Uh, this is because we are uh, we uh, we are in the in in our algorithm we uh, pre eliminate. Uh, the kilometric position parameters at each epoch, and then after we fix the ambiguities, we, we recover. We recover the kilometric solutions one by one, and in this processing, we lose the information for the uh, kilometric positions, including the variance covariance matrix. So we only have uh, the uh, we only have the uh, the position estimates. Uh, some software, for example, if you uh, because we are using a list of squares. Uh, this information can hardly be retrieved. But if you use common filter, for example, you process the data epic by epic forward, and then you can have the uncertainty information because the position will be output at each epic. Uh, but after the smoothing process, we, uh, this kind of uncertainty will be lost as well. So uh, I see some, some applications, especially, uh, especially in real time, they need some uncertainty information for the climatic positions. Um, but but maybe that's not so usual a requirement. Uh, I I never use such kind of uncertainty information because uh, it's it's just internal um, some kind of internal uh, met, uh, internal um, uh, uncertainty information for position estimates. I'd like to use uh, compare my position estimates with respect to. A benchmark like the IGS solution to assess the final uh, positioning performance. But anyway, we don't have uh, anyway we don't have this information uncertainty information for climatic solutions. Uh, we have this uncertainty uncertainty information for all in the static position, just you have seen in the in the in the position file, right? So Elizabeth uh, uh, wrote wrote her message down. She says, um, "Does it?" Get Rhinex two as input file or only Rhinex three format? Both. We can process both. Rhinex two is okay as well. So just like 
uh, we do the processing for uh, AC12. Uh, the AC12 is actually right next to found. You can see AC12, this is AC12. This is AC12 station is actually right next to. It's right next to file. So for Renex 2 and Renex 3, we can do both. CCJ2 is Renex 3, you can see here. CCJ2 is Renex 3. So, uh, so uh, no worry about this, you can process both. Okay, Mark Murray, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Uh, sure, I had a couple. Uh, I, I, my first question was about the kinematic solutions. I think you've answered what I was going to ask was whether it's epic by epic or are you doing some sort of common filtering. It sounds like you're you're res, you're taking it uh, you're looking at all the data and resolving ambiguities and then doing epic by epic. Is that correct? Uh, yes, we do. We divide the estimation process into two parts. The first part is the list of squares, and the second part is the ambiguity fixing. So after we finished the list of squares, we stored we stored the various covariance information for the ambiguities in a in a separate file, and the ambiguity ambiguity fixing process will read this uh, ambiguity information profile, uh, uh, information file to to fix them into integers, and then this integer constraints will be incorporated back into the list of squares as a pseudo observations of hard constraints to uh, to produce the ambiguity fixed solutions. So this is the process procedure that we did in our software. Which which is done on an epic by epic by basis on the second step. Yes, if you do uh, the climatic solution, the stats, uh, epic by epic. Yeah. Uh, but if you do the uh, static solution, then all of the of data course. will be will be uh, superimposed together and uh, estimate one. Sure, step. sure. Okay. And I also was wondering, it wasn't quite clear to me what the difference is between um, algorithmically, what the difference is between hourly and daily and between mobile and seismic. <laughs> seismic. <laughs> Maybe this naming convention is not so good. But, uh, you know, sometimes the users want to... Um, for example, because we uh, we 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 are uh, produce these four templates because some users will have the uh, the the requirement to process uh, twenty four hours data, and uh, for longer time longer period of data will facilitate our processing because the data quality control will be much better. Uh, you have a long time span, and uh, then the ambiguity fixing can be easier because uh, even the, even if you just uh, rounding the ambiguities to their nearest integers. And most of the time, it, they will be correct. Uh, but if you do uh, processing for for just an hour of data for a few hours or even shorter period of data, the most the biggest difficulty for us is to fix the ambiguities, because shorter period of data means right. So you can hardly make sure the ambiguities converge to their highest precision, and uh, their variance covariance matrix may not represent the true precision. And then you can you may have the possibility to fix the ambiguities to wrong integers. So then we have to be careful in the software. So that's why in uh, in two different files templates, we need to uh, make different choices for the configurations. For, uh, for example, we can see um, here for the hourly solutions. So uh, let me just... Uh, just see some, some ambiguity fixing blocks. So here, um, uh, so here. So if you, if, if for shorter periods of data, we, we cannot remove the ambiguity means we, we do not pre-eliminate the ambiguities. We just store it in the variance covariance matrix. And then we have to think about whether uh, the duration of the ambiguities for shorter periods of ambiguity would not be resolved because their precision is low. And the cutoff elevation means, all right, so the ambiguities up from some low elevation satellites and we don't resolve them either. And uh, the weather lane decision, this, this number showed uh, some criterions we used for, uh, for, uh, for judging whether this ambiguity can be fixed or not. And the critical search means in a lambda search, how many, uh, how, many uh, how the partial ambiguity resolution can be, can be done. So uh, you, you, have, you have to be very, very smart to control these options. So we just do it in uh, according to our experiences. But if you want to do a very sophisticated processing, you need to understand how these options can be controlled. Uh, so that's why we just um, 
we just uh, uh, very uh, some, somehow reluctantly provide several templates here just in, for general uh, computation. Uh, sometimes these files may not produce the ideal results for you. And uh, then you need to understand the options within the, uh, the control file. But anyway, for most cases, you can do them. Uh, you can do it with uh, the file here, the daily for long period of data. And the hourly means for short period of data processing. The seismic means, uh, because the seismic stations are, are always static, except for the period of, uh, of ground motions caused by earthquakes. So we can, uh, we can, um, we can optimize some processing uh, procedures, uh, which uh, are different from the contemplate uh, configure template hourly. Mobile means uh, for some stations are really moving. For example, uh, I know some guys using doing uh, high precision positioning. They, they they always use a static station to simulate the kinematic solution, but uh, this is not real for all uh, scenarios. So for some stations, for some ships, shipborne data and airborne data. And that they are, the platforms are really moving. They are moving for a large distance, for a, for a thousand kilometers or even hundreds of kilometers. Then you need to think about how to, uh, how to make sure your data editing is correct. So we produce the mobile uh, template to deal with these cases. Yes. Okay, okay, thank you, uh, that, that helps. Oh, uh, welcome, you're welcome. Omar, do you wanna answer your, ask your question? Yeah, yeah, I have a few questions. Uh, First, uh, can we disable backward smoothing for kinematic processing? Uh, sorry, uh, can you say it again? Uh, you... Uh, can, 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 can we disable uh, backward smoothing for kinematic processing? Uh... Oh, okay. Uh, you, you, may, you, want, you only want to filter the solution. You don't want to back, backward smooth, right? Is this what you mean? Yeah, I I I I want to see a convergence time. Oh, uh, convergence how, time. How, how right. Okay. I, how can I see? Okay, I got you. Um, unfortunately, this software cannot do uh, filter the solution only because because of the uh, estimation algorithm. We uh, we don't use a common filter or smoother to enable the data processing. We use list of squares. So for list of squares estimation, we have to finish all of the data accumulation and then uh, resolve the normal matrix. And then afterwards we recover the, uh, the position estimate and the, and the Zenith troposphere estimates. Uh, so at each epic, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, see uh, the, the backward or the backward smoother and uh, forward filter actually are already combined in the list of squares estimator. So you have to find a find a filter find a common filter based software to to look at the convergence time. Uh, but unfortunately, this software cannot do that. Uh, convergence time is not so critical for science re of science applications uh, because most of them are post processing uh, applications. And then, uh, and uh, they can, uh, they they may not be so concerned about the convergence time. And then normally, if you have one hour data, the convergence is not a problem. Uh, it will take about twenty minutes for a PPP to converge in real time. But if you if you have multiple constellations of data to be combined together, normally five to ten minutes can make your filter to converge. So uh, so so they are not the topic of uh, to be addressed mm -hmm. by this software. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank, thanks, it's not clear. And just a uh, second question. Uh, are all the Beidou 3 satellites uh, are used for uh, a ambiguity resolution? Uh, so what's that like for ambiguity resolution? Uh, are, are all uh, Beidou 3 satellites uh, are used for ambiguity resolution? Uh, for ambiguity resolution, we use only GPS, uh, Galileo, and the Beidou satellite, Beidou 2 and the Beidou 3 satellites, all used for uh, ambiguity resolution, including QZSS. QZSS satellites can also be used for ambiguity resolution. Uh, but this depends on whether you have the BIAS products. I mean, the BIAS products is the BIA file. If you don't have the BIA file, then you can only have a flow solution. 
uh, let me show you what's the BIA file. Here uh, is the XDB file in this directory. You see here, this is the BIA file. Start with the BIA uh, tag here for the first line. This shows the buys, the buys products uh, provided by IGS. So uh, for each satellite has one buys, for each observable it has one buys here. If you, you have, you must have this file to enable and get fixing in PVP. Uh, for GLONASS, we don't do any fixing for GLONASS data because it has the FDMA signals as mm -hmm. I have talked about uh, at the beginning of this class. So the, uh, the, 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 we, we don't do that for GLONASS. Uh, but for all, a lot of the systems like GPS, uh, Galileo, Beidou, and the QSS, we can do uh, the fixing. Okay, th th thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. There was a question from uh, Francisco in the chat. Um, he says, if you have a different session, if you have different session names in the Rhinox files, how do you specify which one of the files in the database you want to process? Yeah, this is a problem. And uh, for example, here for each directory in the data, in the different directory for each day and uh, on each year, we have only one file for one station, right? But sometimes you may, you may have a multiple file for one station. For example, for the first hour, so the second hour and the third hour, you have three files for that station. And in this case, you have to, um, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't do that very well in the current software. We, uh, for example, let, let, me, let me do another case using the Renex 2 naming conventions that will be better explained. Uh, oh, this is still too, uh, okay. So these are the uh, uh, limit following the limit convention of, of Rhinox 2. So this is a station name and the year of day to uh, uh, 210. And these are the session session time zero, right? Zero means uh, 24 hours of data. If you have uh, the first hour of data, it may be CCJ2, oh, sorry, CCJ2, uh, 210A, 210. This is for the first hour of data following the IGS conventions. Uh, the problem is uh, this file name cannot be recognized by the software either, unfortunately. You have to replace A to be zero before you can recognize the file. Uh, this is for the facility, uh, for the convenience of the software, because if you have the very, very varieties, varieties, uh, varieties of naming conventions, then it's hard for the software to recognize all of them. Uh, so if you have a multiple file, uh, the uh, I will recommend you uh, place the observation file one by one into the direct data directory. For example, for one processing, you just put you just place only one file for that station in the directory, and after that processing, you can move this uh, observation file out of this uh, directory and place another file in it, or you can uh, indicate the correct path for each of your files, uh, then uh, that will make your processing easier. Anyway, you have to separate all of your files uh, uh, from the same stations uh, into different directories before you can process them. Um, so this is, uh, unfortunately, this is not, uh, not uh, easily uh, processed. Yeah. We can, we can uh, think about some other ways to process it, uh, pro process uh, this kind of conditions in uh, in the future versions. Thank you for the question. I think we got time for probably one more since we're a little over time. <laughs> um, but I've I've got a question from John DeSantis Santo. Where are the uncertainties uncertainties for the position estimates of kinematic solution logged? Um, I have answered this question actually uh, in the. Let me go to this directory. So for kinematic, this is the kinematic solution. We, um, so we see here, uh, actually in the kinematic solution, we don't have any uncertainty reported here. We only have the position estimates. If you go to the end of the line, you see here the end of line is the PDOP value and the number of satellites. 
we don't report this because of the estimator uh, pro estimator characteristics. Uh, the estimator will not produce uh, the solutions uh, in the in the filtering process. So then the positions are uh, this position, this epic wise positions are all recovered from the list of squares estimator. So during the pre emulation of the epic wise position parameters, the variance covariance information can hardly be uh, recovered from from the solutions. So yeah, this is my this is my explanation. Okay, I, I put in the chat, um, if there was any questions that weren't answered, um, feel free to uh, ask them in the Slack. Otherwise, okay. I think we should probably go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good to talk to you all guys. And uh, thank you for your interest in this software. Uh, your, your comments will help us to improve it. For example, how to deal with uh, the observation files from the same stations in the, in the same directory, and how to uh, how to use some other AC products to process it, and also the uncertainties for the epic wise positions. Uh, this can be uh, this can be uh, addressed in the future as well. We can think of some method. All right, thank you. Any further questions for? Uh, <laughs> So we, uh, I think everybody's, uh, everybody's uh, bored, getting bored on this. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> yeah. All right, shall we close? Yes. We can, we'll see you, uh, see, you, uh, yeah, see you today after tomorrow. Okay. We can uh, talk about some advanced topics on uh, the data processing. All right. Bye-bye.